Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of The Studio. My name is Adam, and today's special episode is called What's in My Mallet Bag. This video is gonna show you everything in my mallet collection that I bring with me all the time. I carry them with me to my concerts or to my rehearsals, and if I'm not doing either of those things, they're always with me in the studio. So I'd love to hear what kind of mallets you guys use as well. Let me know in the comments below, but for now, this is What's in My Mallet Bag. I'm gonna kickstart this off of the bag itself, of course. This is the Humes & Berg Galaxy Grip Bag. You would have seen this in episode four of the studio, which is in the description below. Fantastic bag, super lightweight, super easy. Carries all the stuff I need and it's just, just perfection. Next, I have my most frequently used mallet series, which is this. This is the Robert Van Syce series from Vic Firth. Absolutely legendary mallet. Been around for years, extremely versatile very balanced. When you use these mallets, you know exactly where they're gonna go. That's how they feel. You just feel like you're in ultimate control. I love them. In this pile, I have two twos, two threes, and two fours. That's a total of six mallets, which I can mix and match to make any four mallet group for most marimba solos. Now, as much as I love the Van Sizes, I also have mallets that are a bit more mellow. So these are my second most frequently used mallets. These are the Nancy Zeltzman series from Encore Mallets, and they're much bigger headed than the Van Sizes, so I use them for more melodic things, nice music. This is the preset graduated set, which comes in six, four, three, two, and Encore does it backwards to Vic Firth, so the higher the number is, the softer it is. Great Great pair of mallets for the price and I've used them quite a lot already in the few months that I've had them. These guys are really popular in Australia. These are the Inaki Sebastian MCS series mallets and they're very pretty mallets. I love this purple color. I use these mallets for about a year and a half and a lot of my friends use these for two, three, four years even. I like the sound of them. I like the feel of them. I like that Inaki Sebastian sells these directly to the people. I use these mallets mostly as beaters now, as ensemble beater mallets. What that means is that I use them for pretty much any ensemble music because these can take a beating and survive. <laughs> Ebony put some silver tape on these mallets to identify that they're mine, which I think is a really nice touch. Shout out to Inaki Sebastian, great guy, and these are great mallets. Next, I've got a pair that I use very frequently as well, which are the 84Bs from Mike Bolter. Now these mallets are from the Contemporary series of Mike Bolter, and this is a series that not many people have heard of. Well, I don't know many people who own 84Bs, and I just bought them on a whim from somewhere because they were on special or on sale or something, because you know, Mike Bolter is just like literally the cheapest mallets you can buy. Not necessarily the worst, just the cheapest. And I bought these because I was interested in the shape, which is just this massive head. And they're actually lighter than they look. They almost feel like they're hollow inside. I use these mallets for bark because there's a large surface area. They're really fun to play for bark. The overall feel is actually really good for the price. Literally, these two mallets together are 52 US dollars. Like, are you serious? <laughs> I have two pairs of this, but generally I only carry one because I only ever need to carry one. They're a really good mallet for two mallet bark. I use this for the violence Sonata in G minor, so much fun. Zivkovich's. No mallet collection is complete without the old Zivkovich. These mallets are a mainstay of a lot of people's collections and I'm personally 50-50 about them. I love the weight of them. They are really weighty but I don't think that suits a lot of pieces. For me personally, I use these more for ensemble applications because the weight kind of gets in the way of my playing. This isn't the same for everyone. I know a lot of people who prefer heavier mallets. I just that's not me. And now you're probably wondering, why am I only holding three of these mallets instead of four? And the answer is this. I snapped one of the mallets like two weeks ago uh, because I was getting a bit too overexcited and the whole shaft snapped off. So I'm one mallet short now. If you want to be like the man himself, get Zivkovich's. Uh, uh. Everyone recognizes these mallets. I'm sure you all know what they are. Mike Bolter 23Rs, affectionately known as the Bolter Blues. Now everyone in university was telling me, you must get these. These are essential for ensemble purposes. You can use them on anything. They are like the bread and butter of mallets. No, 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 no. Mike Bolter will have probably made a killing from this mallet series alone. It still remains the most popular mallet on Steve Weiss from Mike Bolter, which is hilarious. People use these for everything from like Sejourné on the vibraphone all the way up to on Philocentric Lecture on the Marimba. Just everything. These are one of the few rattan shaft mallets that I own and I like them for vibraphone. They're pretty good with like a general sound because the blue ones are meant to be just like a medium. I don't really like them on marimba. They sound a bit too dotty for marimba because the heads are tiny and they're a bit too short for marimba as well. You can see how badly I've used these mallets. I've had them for about four and a half years now. They've seen better days. <laughs> But on the topic of Mike Bolter, 
These are some of their best creations. These are the Mike Bolter 46Rs, otherwise known as the Tony Miscelli series. I still don't know if that's how you pronounce his name, but Tony Miscelli is basically a vibraphone artist and he's a beast kind of like Dave Friedman and all those other guys. And these mallets are just really nice to look at, but they also sound incredible. A very warm sound that is also very sharp and attacky when you need it to be. It's, it's perfect. Given that I only use one set of vibraphone mallets, I think these are great. These are the staple of American snare drum sticks, Cooperman ones. I don't really need to say much about these because everyone has a pair of these. But essentially they are really nice balanced sticks from America that cost a lot of money, but rightfully so because they're pretty versatile sticks for the very little snare drumming that I do. <laughs> Here's a broken shaft from the Zivkovich. You can see that I wrap all of my mallets in Yonex tape, which is badminton tape. I find the colors to be a lot more appealing and the tape is a lot cheaper. Like one roll can get you eight mallets wrapped, so it's a lot cheaper than getting Promark stick wrap or whatever it's called. But yeah, look at this shaft. You could like stab vampires with this thing. I really don't need to say anything about these sticks either. These are Vic Firth SD1 Generals. Everyone has a pair of these. They're dirt cheap compared to the Koopermans. And honestly, they don't even sound bad. These babies, the essential Xylophone Phone mallet. I think every university and conservatory's percussion gear list always has a pair of these. But if yours don't, these are the IP902s from Innovative Percussion, James Ross's xylophone mallets. And as you can see, Ebony cut out a banana sticker to put on the top of the mallet so that people know that this is mine. No one else would ever put banana stickers on their mallets because they ain't stupid. We have these bad boys, which are Mike Boulder 4Rs. These mallets are called green rubbers in Australia because they have a green rubber head. These are nothing special, they're just rattan shafts with a rubber head. But they work and they sound really good on things like wood blocks. Vic Firth M132s. I think these are xylophone mallets, but I have actually never used these before. I just bought them on a whim because I saw them in New York for like $5. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna buy these. <laughs> but you never know when you need a dark green xylophone mallet. <laughs> Swizzles from Vic Firth. These again are very common, SD6s. You can flip them around. One end is a small tip, kind of like an SD2 Bolero. And one of them is a round tip, so you can do like really simple multi-percussion stuff with these sticks that involves flipping around. Or if you just want to use one end, you can do that too. I also bought these in New York for a bargain. I think they were 10 bucks. Yeah, I am a stickler for bargains. These guys are actually Mike Bolter 11Rs, which are meant to be marimba mallets, like ultra hard marimba mallets. Yellow marimba mallets. I think people called them yellow bullets because they always heard me playing these and they'd be like, oh, stop, stop. Basically last year what happened was I was playing Kapetsky, Canned Heat, and the yellow hair just flew off because it was just, I don't know what, what happened, but the hair just flew off. So I just ended up using the cores by themselves, which actually make really good multi mallets. But they are wearing out, which is why I got those green rubber mallets instead. Fun collection piece. <laughs> the only thing that I play even less than snare drum is glockenspiel. So I have Bolter Basic BB12s. I've used these for excerpts like three times ever, and then I've used them for orchestra a couple of times. Other than that, I don't really use these because I don't play much glock but they're a really nice cheap brass mallet for Glock. Especially if you have ambitious composers who want you to play Glock with brass mallets or do like funny scrapey things with temple bowls. This is perfect for you. Green LP shaker, uh, in case you ever need an egg shaker. Inside the pocket, I always keep a packet of Band-Aids. These are the American Band-Aids. Thank you, America. I always keep a packet of Band-Aids because you never know what will happen to your fingers, especially in performance. So having a pack of these will save your life. On the top, I have a Marimba 1 keychain, which I got with the Marimba 1 Easy reviewed in episode one. If you wanna check that out, that's in the description below as well. You know when a Porsche has like a car key that has the Porsche logo on it? This is exactly the same thing, but for Marimba 1. <laughs> I'm so egotistical. Inside this top pocket, I've got a couple of things as well. Simple things like earplugs, whole bunch of pencils, spare camera batteries for my vlog camera because I always carry my vlog camera around. And yeah, that's it. See, my bag is empty now. That is everything that's in my mallet bag. So I'd love to know what you guys have in your mallet bags. Leave them in the comments below. Or if you'd like to see a review on anything in my mallet bag that isn't already covered on my channel, let me know as well. Otherwise, I will see you next time for another episode of The Studio. Thank you very much for watching and good night.